So if you're preparing for your step one, I'm sure you must have heard of your NBMEs or UWSAs. These are universally well-known practice tests that provide as a relative indication of where you stand in your preparation for step one. But with so many NBMEs out there, people tend to write these without a proper understanding of how exactly you should use them and the mindset that you should enter with them. So in this video, we're going to be talking about different tips and things you should know before starting your NBMEs. And we'll also talk about how to optimize each NBME so you get the maximum output from each and every single one. Hey guys, for those of you guys who don't know me, my name is Dr. Chawla and I'm an international medical graduate from India and I'm currently doing my residency in the United States. I try to make videos to break down and simplify the different things that you need to know on your path to residency. If you have any questions at all or you'd like to see any videos, please leave a comment in the comment section down below and add me on Instagram at Dr. Chawla and I'll be sure to answer your questions as soon as I can. And if you found this content helpful, please leave a like and subscribe for more useful content like this. Now let's talk about the different practice tests. Well, before starting each practice test, you should know that each each practice test has a relative prediction value. Now let's take an example and talk about a hypothetical made up NBME, NBME X. This NBME X has a certain prediction value. And let's say that whatever you get on your NBME X, people tend to get 10 points higher on their actual step one. So if you get a 230 in your NBME X, people normally get 240 in step one. And this is a prediction value of this certain NBME. Now you need to know that each and every NBME isn't the same for everyone. It's true that there's a general trend for most of the population, but there's so many outliers. One person might find a test easy whereas another one might find it hard. There are going to be a lot of tests where other people found hard and you did well or other people found easy and you did bad. So try to take each NBME with a grain of salt. Now there's so many NBMEs out there. You have NBMEs ranging from NBME 13 all the way to the newest one NBME 24 and every year they still keep coming out with more. Now it's important to realize that the earlier ones are less predictive. With new questions and concepts in the USMLE every single day, each new NBME has new topics that most people have not heard of. And the people who do well are the people who have a baseline knowledge and have good question strategy to bridge the gap between their knowledge and the answer. Now I talk a lot about how to build your question strategy in another video so I'll leave the link to that in the description down below. But with all this being said it is important to understand that the concepts in the old MBMEs are already incorporated into your first aid in your USMLE syllabus. Therefore you may do really well in one of the older MBMEs but they generally grossly over predict. Therefore I'd say use the older MBMEs first as practice MBMEs. Save the predictive ones for the end. And this kind of provides a gateway into my next point. Save your predictive NBMEs for the end. Again, remember these predictive NBMEs don't have to be predictive for everyone and that they can be predictive for most people, but they're always outliers. At this point of time, most people say that NBME 18 and UWSA 2 are your most predictive practice tests and you should save these for the end. A common mistake is that people want to write them early just to know where they are, but later two to three months after that, when they're about to write their tests and they want to know where they stand, they don't have accurate predictors. This is why fight the urge and write them last. Now these NBMEs means just like your actual USMLE is graded on a curve. Why does this matter? It should change the way you view these NBMEs or any test in general. Generally, if you get a question wrong that everyone else gets right, then you'll lose a lot more points. However, if you get a question right that most people get wrong, then you'll gain a lot of points. Now, what does this mean? Most people enter the USMLE with the mindset that they want to learn everything. But in reality, you should really only be focusing on your high yield information. Just knowing the high yield information or the basic important information that everyone else knows will help you from dropping many points. Many people try to learn different resources because they want to be better than the other person. But it's really important to use your gold standard resources and master UWorld, First Aid, and Pathoma. And I provide a lot more information on how to study in this video right here. And I'll leave the link for that in the description down below. So focus on the high yield information and this will guarantee you from getting below a certain baseline score. Before starting an MBME, remember, be comfortable with uncertainty. I'd say for around 50% of the questions, you won't for sure know if your answer is right or wrong, but that's common. You should be comfortable with making educated guesses and judge your preparation that your educated guesses will be right. And this leads me to my next point. After taking your next MBME, try to identify the trend. There are people who trust their gut and people who overthink. With several MBMEs, try to identify your trend and see whether your gut has been right most of the time or and you taking that second to think a little bit extra improves your score. For me personally, every time I'd overthink, it would drastically drop my score and therefore I had to take a step back and trust my gut and this really helped with my score. Now remember, there is no point of redoing your NBMEs. One thing many people do is that they try to redo their NBMEs because they feel like they haven't taken it properly the first time around. But there really isn't any point of redoing your NBMEs. Out of 200 questions, let's say you remember even 5 to 10 questions. That can significantly affect your score to the 
point that your test isn't that predictive anymore. I know many people who say that they don't remember a test at all because they took it six months ago, but I still don't think that you should redo that MBME. Now, with that being said, you can never go wrong in actually going through the questions and try to find out the answer. It's really important for you to know that each NBME is high yield. There are many people who get too lazy to go over their MBMEs because they're eager to continue the plan they initially had. But learning and understanding the concepts in each practice test will significantly improve your test scores. So make sure you spend enough time to go through each and every single MBME. Now, if I started my test around eight o'clock, each test is a five hour test and I'd be done around one to 115. I'd spend the rest of the day going through two blocks very thoroughly and do the remaining two blocks the next day. Now, there are people who are normally in a time crunch and they can go through each and every question. At least go through your incorrect questions and try to use Google or whatever you can to understand the concepts behind the question. Remember to always simulate exam settings. Make sure you have the same morning routine that you're gonna have on your test day and start your test every morning. Generally, your test will be around eight o'clock in the morning, but you'll wake up around five o'clock on the day of the exam, get ready, go to the center. So I'd suggest that you do the same thing where you wake up at five o'clock, eat the same light breakfast you'll have on your test day and go to the exam. Don't take your MBMEs in the evening. Generally, your mind functions the best in the morning. And if it doesn't, use this to try to train yourself. Create a proper routine that you're gonna follow on your test day. There was one test that I overrate before an MBME and I fell into a food coma. And I've gone to a food coma where I was really lethargic and tired and I didn't really do well in that practice test and my score fell around 20 points. So it's important to remember that although the major determinant for your score is your knowledge, there's so many other factors that do play into it. It depends on your anxiety levels, whether you slept the night before, what you ate in the morning. And therefore, if you do bad in an MBME, try not to let it discourage you. It's important to try to identify these tiny things and try to work on them so that these aren't a problem in your actual exam. Remember, these tests are difficult and you're not the only one struggling with them. So when you take your USMLE Step 1, it's an eight hour long test and question fatigue is very common amongst most people. Therefore, it's important to use these MBMEs to try to train you. Each MBME consists of four blocks, each of 50 questions. Each block is around one hour and 15 minutes. And so I would suggest that you train yourself to do the first two blocks back to back without a break. It's gonna be really hard at first, but over time you're gonna end up training yourself so that you'll be better prepared to tackle that question fatigue. Try to make sure that you relax and not study at least half a day before each and every NBME. The reason I say this is because this brings down anxiety levels and makes you write your NBME with a fresh mind. Generally, the topics that you study the night before are the topics that are the most fresh in your head. However, it kind of messes with the differential diagnosis. If there's a question with a person with exertional chest pain and you studied cardiology just the night before, then most of your differential diagnosis will be revolving around only cardiology and you won't be able to think of other uncommon causes. Now, because every MBME is five hours, but your U world is eight hours long, a lot of people try to test themselves and do two NBMEs or two UWorld self-assessments back to back. But I personally don't really see the benefit in that. In my personal opinion and from what I've seen, if you're able to do a five hour test comfortably, then you more than likely won't face question fatigue by the time you get to the eight hour mark. And remember, this question fatigue is something that's gonna get better with time. At the start, I used to get tired just by doing my first block. But over time, I trained myself to do two to three blocks back to back and still be able to do more. Personally, I would always take some prophylactic acetaminophen right before the test just to prevent any headaches. But that's just a personal preference. Most people say that you world self-assessments are over predictive, but the question stems and the style of the test is very similar to that of your actual USMLE. Personally, when I was writing my USMLE step one, it really just felt like I was doing UWorld blocks. Therefore, I'd suggest that you save this for the end. Lastly, I want to talk about how people mark their questions in their actual MBMEs. I'd suggest that you mark them the same way you actually plan to mark them in the real test. Personally, I wouldn't mark all the ones that I don't know the answer to, but I'd mark the ones that I felt like I needed to come back to. Because if you find yourself to have a little bit of extra time at the end of each block, you wouldn't want to go through each and every single question that you felt like you didn't know, but still just the ones that you actually think you can have an impact on. Again, it's really important to remember that these MBMEs are hard and most people do struggle with them. But remember that this is the process that practically everyone goes through. It's important to go in with a calm, clear mind. And remember, the way you do on one particular MBME doesn't really matter, but it really depends on the trend of your MBMEs. Now, if you're consistently getting low, then probably you might need to look at the factors that may be causing it. But if you do well in several MBMEs, but in one MBME, your score suddenly drops, take it with a grain of salt and try to understand understand what you did wrong so you won't repeat the mistake next time. Now there is no right or wrong order in which you should take these MBMEs, but if you'd like me to make a video on the general predictive values of each and every test and a preferred order that helped most people that I helped tutor, please leave it in the comment section down below. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to add me on Instagram at Dr. Chala. And if you'd like more videos like this, please leave a like.
like and subscribe so I can make more videos like this for you.